let's talk about the Joint Commission and the role a Joint Commission plays in reviewing a hospital's performance. Thank you. Mr. Hunter. Good afternoon, Mr. Corker. Good afternoon, Mr. Hunter. Do you, I thought you said you didn't have the report. I don't know, sir. You're not, you're not listening. Perhaps I'm not being clear today. I do not have access to the 2018 report. That sound was Hunter's soul leaving his body. I, I thought I buried this Dracula several years ago. But you have an opinion uh, to a reasonable management probability that the failure of the medical executive committee to address this caused or contributed to the harm of Mike Kowalski. Objection. Beyond the scope. You can answer. Thank you. I do believe that this failure on the part of the governing body contributed. And this particular individual happens to also be remarkably charismatic and have phenomenal hair to combine with my, I guess, phenomenal beard. <laughs> <laughs> At two, Rob, you're gonna jump on the good hair stuff too, really? Dude, why not? I mean, I <laughs> this thing, I can't keep this thing in order. Thank you for that. And speaking of looking fabulous, coming to the program right now, Dr. Joe Corcoran, who we have often labeled here as Dr. Good Hair. How are you? I'm great. Can you Hey, 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 hello, advocates. Welcome back. It is great to have you here again. And um, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things up front, the most important things up front. First and foremost, happy first date anniversary to the gregarious Greek goddess, my fabulous, wonderful, and unbelievably beautiful wife, Patty. Um, 26 years ago, right now, we were heading out on my uh, first ever boat, power boat, uh, grew up on sailboats. Um, uh, we went out on my boat and uh, we had dinner reservations, but for a lot of reasons, we ended up having, having to go out on the boat. It was a beautiful cloudless night, just like tonight. Temperatures were cool. It was perfect. At the time, she and her dad had a restaurant, a Greek restaurant. And, um, and so when I called her to Audible in the morning uh, and said, hey, instead of a restaurant, how about if we go out and have dinner on the boat? I was thinking we would go out by boat, stop at one of the waterfront restaurants, but she one upped me. And she said, well, that's great. Uh, meet at the dock and I'll bring the food. I have a restaurant, I'll bring the food. I thought, that's genius, that's great. So uh, that's when I learned that uh, the Greeks, one of the principles that the Greeks live by is any worth, anything worth doing is worth doing to excess. She showed up with not one, not two, three, coolers full of food three coolers for two of us okay so yeah i listen i i didn't ask any questions <laughs> it was a fabulous food and she later said well I, I i said why so much food she said i had no idea what you like to eat good point Good point. But I will tell you that it uh, that was the start of 26 amazing years. So uh, happy anniversary, Patty. I love you uh, more than anything. You make my life complete. And thank you for our amazing kids, too. So, uh, so happy anniversary. Um, speaking of kids, speaking of kids, I got some commentary from my first ever YouTube short this morning um, and I was wearing an SMU ball cap. I think most of you know that I, uh, I, my heart bleeds orange and blue for the Florida Gators. 
Notice the color scheme around here. Um, wearing an SMU hat uh, in, in, out, of, uh, out of respect for um, uh, my daughter, who is a student there, who I, makes me immensely proud. She's wildly creative and amazing. She's a lot like her mom that way. Um, and she, uh, uh, her, two of her neighbors, figuratively speaking, uh, from who grew up in Highland Park, um, had remarkable showings at the Masters this weekend, including uh, Scotty Scheffler, who uh, won the Masters for the second time in three years. Uh, really, the Super Bowl of golf, and I'm I am not a golfer. I am learning how to golf. Um, I gave it up 30 years ago, but I am learning because my son picked it up about a year ago, and it's a way to spend time with him. Uh, yes, Courtney Meek, SMU is in Southern Methodist University. Yes, uh, in uh, uh, Highland Park section of Dallas, um, and sh and so. Uh, I am picking up the game, and now uh, my daughter and my wife both have expressed an interest in picking it up as well. So uh, this may be the uh, the good hair family uh, sport going forward. But Scotty Scheffler won the Masters, a remarkable showing, um, and uh, uh, and actually an SMU grad, Bryson DeChambeau, who also is from uh, Highland Park. Uh, he was in the top five or six, might have been seven. Um, but it's funny, uh, he was so brash and so abrasive and so arrogant when he broke into the uh, uh, the golf scene uh, that it was really easy to not like Bryson DeChambeau. And now he's kind of emerging as this uh, this kind of lovable nerd a lovable geek who's innovating the game of golf like uh, like there's no other. He um, uh, he actually uh, uh, created a new um, form of golf clubs that are three D printed, and uh, they just got approved for use on Tuesday. And he was using them in the tournament starting Thursday. Uh, and uh, finished in the top 10, so he might be on to something. But uh, so uh, to my beautiful daughter, this is for you. Um, so uh, there you go. So that gets us started. Now let's get to it. The headline this morning was, uh, where's Howard, right? If you, um, and I apologize. I just now uh, learned how to uh, do my first ever short, and it didn't work out all that well. I was trying to, let's take, I was trying to show this document, which was just submitted on the 12th. So that was uh, Friday, right? Friday at 12.30 in the afternoon, um, amended certificate of attendance and authority, defendant Johns Hopkins, blah, 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 uh, mediation scheduled for the 15th and 17th, blah, blah, blah. Here's all the people who are going to be there from, uh, from the health system, from MCIC Vermont, which is one of the insurers, um, from, uh, Hopkins mothership. Um, and then you get to the second page and Council of Record, Ethan Shapiro and Chris Altenburn, Esquire, will attend mediation as Council of Record. Now, C. Howard Hunter is still listed on the uh, signature page. But I will tell you, it made me wonder, where's Howard? Um, and a lot of you, offered a lot of interesting speculation around that. Um, uh, let me, let me, hold on. I'm going to mess this up if I'm not careful. A, a lot of the commentary was very, very interesting in my opinion. Um, 
Let me pull up some of it. Ah. So, uh, la, 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 la. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not doing a very good job of finding it, but uh, uh, wow, Mr. Hunter can't tolerate, this is from Ali, Ali Fly, 7873. Wow, Mr. Hunter can't tolerate speaking of any money going to these beautiful people. Or wait, is it possible that Mr. Hunter is no longer tolerated? It's interesting, it's an interesting question. Um, and again, the speculation, that was offered by the community was off the chain this morning. I mean, it was it was kind of, you know, wide open. Um, trying to figure out what it meant was uh, was kind of a a full time job. Was he uninvited? Was he recovering from back surgery, as uh, Cam Miller suggested? Was he um, busy? and couldn't make it well you know again he has been lead counsel outside counsel for johns hopkins for what 10 15 plus years kind of hard to imagine that he's not going to show up for um, a mediation session that was not his idea but it was very clearly a demand of uh Judge Carroll's, right? Um, several options. Matthew Grease, welcome back from Germany. Nice to have you back in the group. Uh, several options. Hunter and Shapiro don't want to be in the same room. <laughs> uh, Jay Hatch doesn't want to pay that many attorneys at the same time. <laughs> and Hunter changed his first name to Vampire and moved to London. I love it, Matthew. I love your sense of humor. That's brilliant. Um, so uh, someone did, uh, actually, a uh, Bravo chick. Oh, wow. The absence of the Dracula Slayer is quite astonishing. Um, uh, Howard, uh, Michelle Edwards, uh, Dr. Joe, Hunter is not there. Is this karma? No Hunter. Hmm. Says uh, Naya, lover of beagles. Um, so a, a really interesting to think about where he was, why he wasn't there. So that was really kind of the, the focus of this morning. Um, the headline this afternoon is very different. It's over. Mediation is over. Um, I will tell you that it is a confidential process. So what happened in the room really can't be discussed. And I will tell you that um, as curious as I am, as much as I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall, um, <laughs> and as much as I would love to be able to have been a fly on the wall and relay everything out to you, um, cause I know that you're as invested in this as anybody who doesn't have actual skin in the game, like the Kowalski family. I will tell you that when I got a call inviting me to have lunch with Greg and with Nick, and it was not even 1230 in the afternoon. I shook my head. I said yes to the lunch invitation, but I, I knew that it was not going to be good news. Um, keep in mind, this mediation was not optional. Back in January, when Judge Carroll went through the remediator process and reduced the verdict that Paul, juror one, and his five colleagues on the jury produced over three days of deliberations. 
and 50, 55 plus notepads of diligent work. And, and Judge Carroll reduced the jury's verdict from 261 million to 208.4 million. When he entered, around the same time that he entered that formal judgment and started that brilliant interest clock that, that um, Scott at Recovery Addict and his son put together, which is now up to over $3 million, by the way, $3 million in interest due. Um, Judge Carroll was very, very specific. He wants this case to be done and he ordered mediation to take place by april 15th that's today several of you four and a half million thank you clk Steffi. several of you made comments at the time that judge carroll wanted mediation to be completed by april 15th and you pushed back when you saw that mediation was scheduled for April 15th and 17th, right? So this, we, we were asking questions, you know, is that compliant? Well, again, giving an inch, taking a yard, et cetera, et cetera. So the mediation was scheduled for three days. Today was day one. Tomorrow was a flex day. Wednesday was the final day. That was the plan. I will tell you that Greg arrived in town, came in from Jacksonville. He arrived in town on Saturday afternoon. He and I got together for dinner on Saturday night. Um, talked about a lot of things, a lot about our families, a little bit about the case, mostly about our families. Nick drove in yesterday. He arrived on Sunday afternoon. Um, both of them went right to work. <clears throat> and they were ready to find a way to bring this to a conclusion that allowed the Kowalski family to get on with their lives and to resume the healing process that we have been asking for, that we have been hoping for, that we have candidly been praying for. Um, as I said, by half past 12, I was headed to my car and headed to lunch with two attorneys that were disappointed to say the least uh no there was not a settlement um again i don't know the details of what took place in the room at first when they told me that the mediation was over i thought they meant it was over for the day and they would have their working day tomorrow and they would get back together on wednesday you know, hey, sometimes that's good, right? Um, it means that there's something on the table and we're going to look at it from, from every which way. And when I asked, are, we gonna, are, are you going to get together again on Wednesday? The answer was resounding, no, it's over. It's done. So mediation, which I think Judge Carroll invested a lot of thought into i mean if you remember he didn't just say because remember this case has been mediated twice pre-trial right but the dynamics different now paul and the five other jurors delivered a verdict a 48 to nothing verdict every question on a 48 question jury form went the way of the kowalskis 
211 million dollars in compensatory damages 50 million dollars in punitive damages that's what the jury having sat through what eight weeks of testimony reduced down to 208.4 huge number And Judge Carroll knew that this case had been going on since even before it was filed in 2018, which is five now, almost six years ago. The, the process started in 2017. So Judge Carroll knows the calendar. He knows that this started a long time ago. Judge Carroll, I believe, is a dad. Well, I know he's a dad because he was his. He referenced his son making fun of the tuft of justice that uh, Megan Fox likes to joke about. He knows that two kids lost their mom. And he was also aware that every time those kids went to therapy, um, Howard Hunter and his team had access to the to the notes, the doctor's notes. I still don't understand how that, that was allowed. I mean, I always knew that there was a physician-patient confidentiality. I have no idea how they pierced that, but they did. So Judge Carroll, once this wrapped up after six or seven years, he is very, very smart about it. It's not just, hey guys, I know that your team and your team of lawyers got together before, had a mediator, and it went nowhere twice. I don't want that again. I want your team and your team to show up. Kowalski's, I want you there. And since Maya was a now an 18-year-old, she was included. She was no longer a minor as she was when this case was filed. But then he took some really smart steps. <clears throat> and he said, I want representatives from the hospital. I want representatives from the health system in Baltimore. I want representatives from any insurer that is going to have to write a check. And I want everybody in that room to be high enough, enough high up enough in the organization to be able to make decisions. Again, trying to avoid the car dealership conundrum of, hey, I just worked out a deal with the, with the sales rep, but now she's gotta go talk to the manager. And they always come back with some goosed number that's never good for you, right? So he didn't want that nonsense. And he specifically set it up so that there would be decision makers with authority. Again, if you look at the document that was filed on Friday, the amended certificate of attendance, it says that each will have full authority to settle without further consultation. Last line of the of the of paragraph 1, okay? Each will have full authority to settle without further consultation. Boom. They brought everybody together, scheduled three days to set aside for this. Hotel rooms, travel. I mean, keep in mind, there were people coming from Jacksonville. There were people coming from Venice, about an hour and a half away. There were people coming from Baltimore. There were people coming from MCIC Vermont, which I'm assuming is in Vermont. And Florida's not a bad time, bad place to be right now. I mean, the weather is spectacular, even with those pesky doves. And it's over by lunchtime on the first day. You know, Joy W101, your your comment just says, I, I, I guess I'm just a Pollyanna. I thought this would be the end of it, so I'm just disappointed. I can't imagine how Maya and Jack feel. 
I used that very same term on the live stream on Thursday. I, I admitted that I too was Pollyanna. I heard the skepticism of Nick and Greg because they'd been in that room before, they'd been in mediation before with this defense team and with this same mediator who knows the case. And they were prepared to offer some very creative solutions. They were there to find a way to let the Kowalskis move forward. But it takes two to tango, guys. And I don't know what happened in that room. I do not know. But for it to be over by lunchtime, I can speculate. You are speculating. I am so bitterly disappointed. You know, I, I love... I love the term that, that Abraham Lincoln used when trying to re, reunify the country at the end of the Civil War and talked about appealing to the better angels. And I honestly hoped that the better angels would be in that room. And maybe they were, but they followed a leader that didn't want it did not want it to end today i know how disappointed i feel i can only imagine how jack and maya and kyle feel today i spoke with jack last night and jack was very very upbeat you know he's been through so much and you know as listen Many in the audience are single parents, right? And it's a tough job. And he's doing such an amazing job of raising kids through middle school, through high school. Maya's about to go to college. She hasn't even graduated high school yet, and she already has her associate's degree. I mean, she's a hardworking, smart kid. And Jack is doing that parenting job on his own, oh, by the way, while also taking them through a bruising trial. And just the process of getting them into the courtroom, the work that Greg and Nick did simply to give them their day in court was remarkable. I mean, there were a lot of folks that that um, said this would never get to trial. And uh, now it seems in, it seems intent. You know, Bravo Chick, you're, you're going to the same place I was going to. You know, it seems that the other side, the defense, is intent on making Kurt look like Nostradamus. Uh, Kurt from Uncivil Law, another great channel you guys should be following. He, on this program, speculated that this was not going to end until this goes to the Florida Supreme Court. And that, he suggested, would be five years from now. Just do the math on that, and five years of interest is just uh, right at $100 million. So even if there is a legal rationale for playing this out to the absolute nth degree, taking this down every single legal avenue you can consider. Is there a business rationale that says, hey, maybe we can win this, but is it worth 20, 40, 100 million dollar wager that we can do this? If you think about it, you know, one of the things that we've said over and over and over as, you know, not just me, but smarter people than me, uh, you know, folks who have actually followed trials, you know, Scott follows trials professionally now. Um, Megan follows trials professionally. Hell, Rob at Law and Lumber, another show you should be watching. He is a lawyer. 
he goes to trial. They all talked about how it seemed that the decisions and the actions of Judge Carroll were appeal proofing this process and this verdict. Judge Carroll also happens to have one of the most unimpeachable records of any jurist in the district. When his cases have been appealed to the Second District Court of Appeal, his decisions are upheld almost 95% of the time. One out of 20, one out of 20 gets reviewed and reversed. One out of 20. So you're wagering an extra $100 million on a one in 20 shot? Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I am, have been, <laughs> I am a retired businessman. A hundred million bucks to see this through, just in interest. And again, you know, how, how judgment proof, how, how appeal proof did Judge Carroll make this? Apparently, kiddos, we're going to see. Um, yeah, so um, Rebecca Eldston um, gutted for the family, Nick, Greg, and all. Uh, yeah, um, Don, Don Act, yes, something. Well, nothing did happen. Uh, the mediation ended today. Instead of three days, it lasted almost a whole half day. And no settlement was reached. It's over. Mediation is over. So a lot of us, like Martha Ivy, are flummoxed. A lot of us are um, really struggling with this. Because I think, again, we are... We as a community are so positive, so upbeat, so committed to doing the right thing. And, um, and this, you know, this opportunity that's embedded in mediation was an opportunity for Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital and Johns Hopkins Health System to own this. Remember what I said? How Patty and I raised our kids, we made it clear that everybody makes mistakes. Remember the Miley Cyrus, uh, Hannah Montana song, Everybody Makes Mistakes? That's what we raised our kids on. And if you make a mistake, there's only three things you've got to do. You got to say, I'm sorry. Got to say, I did this. And you got to say, how do I make it right? So, um, a lot of us were really hoping that this was going to happen today, and it clearly did not, and it will not. So what's next? Well, Kiwi Chick, sanctions still need to be considered. The sanctions are still hanging out there. Um, in the conversations that I had with Nick and with Greg, in the weeks and months leading up to today's scheduled mediation, the consensus was, and same with, with all of the law tubers that I discussed this with as well, um, the consensus was that nothing was going to happen on sanctions until after the mediation was done. Because again, I think in Judge Carroll's mind, and certainly in our hearts and hopes, mediation was going to close this up, was gonna finish this chapter of the book. And then all the post-trial motions, all the sanctions, the reporting to the bar, uh, all the things that have been um, held over for consideration would get that consideration. Now, um, those still need to be considered, but 
What's Judge Carroll's mood going to be like? Yeah, so mediation was completed by April 15th, 2024, just like his order required. So, sure, today met the letter of that order. I'll leave it up to Judge Carroll to decide if it met the spirit of that order. Again, you know, remember that time in the trial? It was in the latter portion of the trial that we heard Judge Carroll say something that Again, I thought showed great restraint and great diplomacy. You know how I feel about about um, about Judge Carroll's judicial temperament. I thought he was exceptional. But Howard Hunter was throwing some shade at Judge Carroll, and Judge Carroll said, and I'm going to try to get this as a quote. He said. Don't look at me that way, Mr. Hunter. Oh, my goodness. If my beautiful bride ever tells me, don't look at me that way, I, I may be sleeping on the couch, right? That was, uh, that was a pretty stark rebuke. How is Judge Carroll going to respond to a mediation that he ordered? with great thought, again, identifying not only who needs to be in the room, but how enabled they need to be to make decisions on behalf of their organization. Again, each will have full authority to settle without further consideration. That's not some entry-level um, uh, entry level employee. That's someone at or near the top of the org chart. That is somebody with access to the president, the CEO, the dean, whomever. And for that whole process to be over in less than three hours, I got to tell you, um, not really sure I'd like to have. Judge Carroll considering sanctions on me. If that's the mood that I suspect he's going to be in. Um, no, Gothic Green, I agree. I don't think he will be too happy. That, oh, oh, double finger guns. He did that too, remember? Denied. That may be the most underrated statement of the evening, Candace. Um, I don't think he's going to be happy at all. Um, does Judge Carroll see a transcript of the mediation? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Judge Carroll, no, uh, I can't. Zess, Alex, uh, was Judge Carroll at the mediation? No. This mediation was overseen by a very, very, very highly regarded uh, highly accomplished, uh, highly respected mediator um, from the from here in Florida. Um, it would be hard to find a mediator with a better reputation than the mediator who was in the room today. This was not in Judge Carroll's courtroom. Um, I don't know how Judge Carroll will learn about what was exchanged in the room in terms of conversation. But um, I suspect that he will uh, uh, investigate. Um, Jules is saying that the moderator, the mediator has to write up a report and submit it to Judge Carroll. Um, I don't know how detailed that report needs to be, though, Jules. Um, I, I asked, I asked about that at lunch today, and um, 
again, without discussing this particular action because they're not allowed to, uh, Greg's answer made me think that those reports can vary widely on level of detail. Um, so uh, it's going to be interesting, guys. Uh, the mediation is over. O V E R over. It will not. It will not have uh, another day. This mediation is over. I don't know that this order for the mediation that Judge Carroll issued. I'm not sure that it is over. And again, I understand the legal arguments for, you know, wanting to take this case to an appellate court or to the Supremes. My goodness. That interest clock really suggests to me that the business decision is going to be hard to uh, hard to rationalize. Four point five thousand six four million five hundred six thousand dollars today. Um, we're not done. We are not anywhere near done. Um, if if I'm not mistaken, the interest comes out to a about 20 million a year, 20 million a year in interest. You better have a high level of confidence in your arguments that, um, that you're gonna win if you're gonna put that kind of a wager on the table. I lived in Las Vegas for almost three years. I, I placed one bet. I placed a bet on my Tampa Bay Lightning they went out and they won the President's Cup for the best regular season record in all of pro hockey in 2019. And they promptly got eliminated, swept in four games by the lowest ranked of the eight teams that made the playoffs. The Columbus Blue Jackets were losing in the second period of the first game and came back and won. And they beat us four games in a row. And I lost the only bet that I placed in three years that I lived in Las Vegas. Um, $20 million a year are table stakes that I would really swallow hard to get to. Get to. Math is God bless you. I did the math for an 18-month appeal process once. An average five-minute bathroom break earns $180. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> I will tell you, I've not been in a good mood today. Um, since since arriving at that lunch and seeing the look on, on Greg and Nick's faces. Um, and, and honestly, they weren't. They weren't sad. They weren't upset. They weren't mad. I think they were just so disappointed. And I and they were disappointed for the Kowalski family. This family has been, their lives have been on hold. Really since losing Beata, their matriarch, their anchor, their foundation. We all want them to be able to resume their lives and to heal. And today was an opportunity for that. Um, and it was a squandered opportunity. So no, Lauren Elizabeth, that is not my dog. My dog is quietly sitting just off, off stage to the left. That is the gigantic two dogs across the street. Um, they love to bark, <laughs> but it's such a nice night here. I've got the sliding glass doors open and, uh, and I'm listening to, uh, 
there are two doves who are threatening yeah. to try to take up nest here that I'll deal with them later, uh, shortly. Um, but today feels like a, a like a missed opportunity. Thank you, Christina Herzog. Thank you for being here and thank you for supporting us. Today looked on on the faces of Nick and Greg. Today looked like a missed opportunity. Um, and I don't know what our next. Shut the doors. I don't know what's next, where, are, where we will have another opportunity this good to allow the family to move forward. But uh, trust me, when we know about it, we'll know about it too. Well, give me one second to uh, shut this door. Be right with you. That should be a little bit better. Sorry about that. Yeah, this is very disappointing, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, my little dog, uh, he's um swears he's a big dog. When he goes by those dogs, oh he he muscles up. I mean the dog. This is bigger than my dog, right? Um so yeah. Uh dog lover, will we see Anderson? anytime soon. Uh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was texting with him uh, just before we went live and um, and um, I offered him the uh, him and Nick um, a platform if they wanted it. Um, but um, uh, come here. but uh, Greg said it's too soon. They needed some time. So Polly Claire, here you go. Char, look here, Char. Look, look. Here's Charlie the Wonder Dog. You're right, Bug Dugger. We are a big group of dog lovers. But this is my little guy. All right, off you go. He, I think he's waiting for his walk. Don't worry, honey. I, I will take him for a walk tonight, I promise. Um, so, yeah, that's all I've really got tonight, guys. Um, I wish I really expected to be able to bring good news to the group tonight. I know, Pollyanna, guilty, guilty. Um, and I'm and I and I'm I'm disappointed. I am bitterly disappointed. Um, I swapped messages with Jack this afternoon. And, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. It's, I apologize if this language offends anybody, but I said that this sucks. And, um, uh, his response made me believe that he agreed. Um, Bravo chick, the way you see it, Jay Hatch is doubling down. I hope the children's hospitals in the area that we talked about, uh, triple and quadruple down. Um, I, you heard me on Thursday night. I am a thousand percent committed uh, to my opinion that uh, those donations were were solicited, and that the announcements about both Tampa General committing to a Muma Children's Hospital and Baycare submitting to a Pajadipati Children's Hospital at St. Joe's are absolutely strategic decisions because they smell blood in the water. There's no question in my mind, no question at all. Um, but we, uh, we have to stay strong for the Kowalskis. Um, they need to fight another day. And you know what, Christina, you're right. It sucks, but it's not surprising. Um, you know, the the brilliant Scott Richards, Dr. Scott Richards, has um, has a theory that whatever badness you can think of, and I'm talking about everybody in this in this 
community of advocates, because we're good people. Whatever the worst thing is that we can think of, someone who does not have good in their heart, but has evil in their heart, can think of something two standard deviations worse than whatever you can think of. And listen, I just find my life is a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more enjoyable when I believe in the essential goodness of the human condition. I just do. I believe in people. And yes, I'm constantly disappointed in some individuals, but most people step up and deliver. And that makes me happy. When you have situations like this, this this was very disappointing. I, I had I had a tough time this afternoon. Um, I think I took it harder than Greg and Nick. I don't know that I took it harder than than Jack or Maya or Kyle. Um, you know, again, I keep going back to that scene in the documentary "Take Care of Maya," when last April this time of year, last year, they were supposed to be in trial. And at the 11th hour, the trial got delayed, got stayed. And that scene that just brought tears to my eyes of Kyle in tears saying, this is never going to end. I hope to God that that wasn't repeated today. Um, I could understand it if it was but it is my sincere hope that it did not um i agree sunset seeker their reputation has been lost forever and the longer this goes on the harder it will be to recover especially when baycare builds the new pajitapati hospital at st joe's and tampa general opens the new muma children's hospital at tampa general hospital um, I agree with you. Um, I don't know what's next, guys. I don't know. But I will be having lots of conversations over the next couple of days. Uh, when we get together again next, uh, we'll, I'll, I, will, I will share with you uh, the best information that I've been able to put together. I'm giving you a heads up. Um, uh, Triple G and I have a dinner on Thursday at six o'clock. Uh, so we, I will not be doing the live stream this Thursday at six. I will be um, identifying another time day, um, and I will work with Sally and have a thumbnail uh, put up early so that you know about the schedule change. But it will not be this Thursday at 6 p.m. because I get to have dinner with my beautiful wife. Um, but I will, Cheryl Torrey, continue to keep you up to date. Um, I do want to congratulate um, Lynn, who's been a member for four months. She's also been a moderator for us, and I hope your shoulder is feeling better, Lynn. Again, Christina Herzog, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Miss Jax, happy anniversary to Dr. Joe and Patty. Thank you. Uh, Calypso is fixing. Thank you for uh, leading the raid of the recovery addicts um, and uh, uh, <laughs> sending this to my husband so he knows what to say next month for our wedding anniversary. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Yoli, happy anniversary to Dr. Joe. Thank you so much, uh, Yoli. I look forward to seeing you and Paul uh, at the restaurant soon. Uh, welcome to Becky, a new member. Uh, Bug Duggar, one of the originals, member for four months. Raid, I love it. And Dilly Pickles, uh, also a member for four months. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, Dr. Joe. I am so grateful to this group. You guys really, um, really make me, uh, you, you lift me up when I'm having a tough day, and uh, uh, today was a tough day. Ruby, thank you. Uh, anyone feeling down, go watch J. Hatch get spanked in appellate court the last time they took the Kowalski case to those judges. You know, that's ex it's actually interesting. It would be interesting to go back and pull up those, uh, those videos and to review them today. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, 
that you asked me to do when I put the post in the community page about two weeks ago about, hey, what 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 content do you want me to to bring you when it's just us talking? Somebody suggested going back and looking at the trial videos and kind of critiquing the way that the way that Scott at Recovery Addict did, the way that Megan did. Um, uh, you know, I, I I thought it was funny um, that uh, the the photograph that I used when I posted that was uh, was a screen capture from Megan Fox uh, Megan Fox's YouTube channel, and it was a quote. It included a quote from Femme Natale, and she actually made a comment in the comment section, hey, that's me. Um, but, you know, um, there was so much about that trial that was, it was all new to me. Um, but I thought there was a lot of, there were a lot of twists. And, and, I, and I think it would be interesting to go back and look at that. I also think that it would be interesting to, uh, as Ruby is suggesting, to go back and look at um, the the pre-trial arguments. Ruby, you are correct. Um, the defense team kind of got its fanny smacked the last time that they went up to the Second District Court of Appeals. Um, it's curious that they think that another trip will, uh, deliver a different result. So, um, I like that idea, Ruby. Maybe, um, maybe you can help me work on that. So, um, I wouldn't mind getting, watching Dr. Levy get her butt handed. <laughs> Nick did have some, they both, both Nick and Greg had some remarkable moments uh, in that trial, didn't they? They were, you know, and again, I mean, we talked about this weeks ago, months ago. How did, how did the defense team not read the room better than it did? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Let's wrap it up here, folks. Uh, I don't know if I could handle watching Witness Anderson get destroyed again. Uh, Lord Elizabeth, uh, God forbid that this trial gets retried. I don't think Witness Anderson will be anywhere, anywhere near the courtroom um, or even called for a deposition going forward. But uh, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Anyway, uh, folks, uh, keep an eye out for the rescheduled Thursday night session. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll share some pictures of the dinner with uh, with Patty on Thursday night at six o'clock. But our show will not be Thursday night at six o'clock. So look out for that. And as always, please make sure that you take care of yourself so that we can take care of others. Good night, advocates. Thank you. I I will tell you uh, without. Without hesitation, I will tell you that I did not have this anywhere in my five-year plan, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> that much I believe. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Make sure that you take care of yourself so that we can be taking care of others. I'll look forward to seeing you in the, in the coming days. Again, Kurt, Jules, thank you so much for making this a very dynamic uh, conversation today. I'm, I'm grateful for your help. Oh, kill me now. Please, please tell me this guy's doing some fraud and there's going to be like an insurance investigator or something. So, uh, Fred, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you for sharing your insights and your experience. And uh, can't wait to bring you back, my friend. I'm looking forward to it. You won't have to try hard. This was a lot of fun. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> you hear that? I get the rest of the day off. Doctor's orders. That's what I hear. <laughs> I will write that prescription anytime for you, sir. And, uh, this will not be our last conversation, especially... If you can get me some Amber Lawrence on the show. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully we'll see you before the hearing next week. But thank you for the honor of being your first guest, Joe. And, uh, you bet. All the kind words. Appreciate it. Please, let's make sure that we take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. Thank you so much.